This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. The nation is continuing to grieve the 11 Jewish worshipers who were gunned down at the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh Saturday, in what's being described as the worst anti-Semitic attack in U.S. history. Funerals are held Thursday for three more victims of the shooting, husband and wife Sylvan and Bernie Simon and Richard Gottfried. Robert Bowers, who's accused of the mass shooting, pleaded not guilty Thursday. He's charged with 44 counts, including murder and hate crimes, over 30 of which could be subject to the death penalty. Bowers has a history of posting anti-Semitic and xenophobic content and was posting on the far-right social media site Gab until just before the shooting. He referred to the migrant caravan as an invasion, repeating the words that President Trump uses. We continue our conversation now with Noam Chomsky, the world-renowned professor, linguist and dissident. He was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Chomsky was. I asked him about the synagogue shooting in Pittsburgh and other recent right-wing attacks. When I was a child, uh, the, uh, uh, the, sh the uh, threat that uh, fascism might take over much of the world was not remote. Uh, that's uh, much worse than what we're facing now. My own locality happened to be very anti-Semitic. We were the only Jewish family in a uh, Irish and mostly Irish and German Catholic neighborhood, much of which was pro-Nazi, so I could see it better on the ground. What we're now seeing <clears throat> is uh, a revival of uh, uh, hate, uh, anger, or fear, uh, uh, much of it uh, encouraged uh, <clears throat> by the uh, rhetorical uh, excesses of the leadership, which are stirring up uh, passions, uh, f terror, uh, uh, even the uh, ludicrous uh, claims about uh, uh, the Nicaraguan army ready to invade us, Ronald Reagan, uh, uh, the caravan of uh, miserable people planning to kill us all. Uh, all of the, these things, uh, uh, plus, uh, you know, praising uh, 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 somebody who uh, body slammed a reporter, uh, one thing after another, all of this raises the the level of anger and fear, which has roots. The roots lie in what has happened to the general population over the past 40 years. People really have faced significant distress. It's an astonishing fact about the United States is that life expectancy is actually declining. That doesn't happen in developed societies, apart from, uh, you know, major war or a huge famine. Uh, but it's happening because of social distress, and not necessarily impoverishment. Uh, the people who are uh, uh, demonstrating this fear and resentment may be even moderately affluent, but what they see is they're stagnating. In the past, there was uh, you had this dream. You worked hard. You could go ahead, get ahead. Your children would be a little better. Now it stopped. It stopped for the last 40 years as a result of very specific socioeconomic policies, which have been designed so that they sharply concentrate wealth, they enhance corporate power that has immediate effects on the political system for, in perfectly obvious ways, even to the point where uh, lobbyists literally write legislation. Uh, this onslaught has literally cast the popula much of the population aside. They're stagnating. They're not moving forward. They see no prospects. Uh, and they're bitter and angry about it. And this anger and bitterness can take pathological forms. It could take very constructive forms. It could lead to popular organized movements which would dedicate themselves to overcoming these uh, blows against uh, a decent uh, human existence, which certainly can be done. Uh, the groundwork for that has been severely undermined, for example, by the destruction, careful 
planned destruction of labor unions, the main force historically for leading the way towards more progressive uh, humane policies. Uh, all of these are a package. They've all gone together for 40 years as precursors, of course, and it has led to a situation where you get an outburst of uh, uh, what Gramsci once called morbid symptoms, pathological developments of the kind that you mentioned, growing out of a, 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 a soil that is uh, uh, rich in uh, incitement to such things happening. So, and then if you could talk about specifically the targeting of the Jewish worshipers, I mean, and the clear connection uh, that the shooter made between um, this temple um, and uh, Hias, the what's formerly known as the Hebrew Immigrant Aid Society, the group that has helped to uh, resettle refugees of any religion um, for well over a hundred years, and he repeated words that Trump has uh, begun using using more and more about, you know, they're helping the invaders come in. Um, if you could respond specifically to that. Well, I think it's pretty clear, these uh, uh, whipping up uh, terror about uh, invasions, uh, people pouring across the border to plan to kill us all, to destroy our civilization. Uh, you take. Uh, People are already somewhat disturbed, um, living under harsh conditions. Uh, this can incite them to uh, acts of extreme violence uh, against uh, targets like uh, the Jewish, uh, Jewish temple. Uh, all the anti-Semitic uh, tropes are pointing in that direction, but most also against uh, Afro-Americans, uh, 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 immigrants, uh, uh, any uh, vulnerable population uh, or, or population that's easy to target for uh, lots of cultural and historical reasons, uh, all this amplified by the loudspeaker up in the White House. Uh, and his minions, who are doing what they can to uh, terrorize the population, uh, create the conditions under which you can get something like the attack on the synagogue. So I wanted to turn, then, to a clip of the Israeli ambassador to the United States, uh, Ron Dermer, who was interviewed by Eman Moeldin on MSNBC on Sunday, so it was soon after the Pittsburgh synagogue massacre. Dermer was asked if Trump's rhetoric um, is in part to blame for the massacre. I see a lot of bad people uh, on both sides who attack Jews. This is not the first time that a Jewish community has been attacked. It is the worst anti-Semitic attack uh, in oh, 200 years in the United States that you have 11 dead. Dermer said no world leader had made stronger statements against anti-Semitism than Trump. And then he went on to blame both sides. To simply say that this is because of, uh, uh, of one person or it only comes on one side is to not understand the history of anti-Semitism or the reality of anti-Semitism. One of the big forces in college campuses today is anti-Semitism, and those anti the anti-Semites are usually not neo-Nazis on college campuses. They're coming from the radical left. This is right after the white supremacist attack on the synagogue, and the Israeli ambassador to the U.S. is now injecting, saying, this comes from both sides. Um, if you could respond to this, interestingly, two days later, when Trump and his family went to Pittsburgh, the only—and this is pointed out in The New York Times— um, the only public official standing there to greet him was Israel's ambassador to the United States, Ron Dermer. Uh, people like the Pittsburgh mayor and the others said this was not the time to come. Well, I think it's quite easy to understand. There is a, an alliance of uh, reactionary, uh, repressive states developing uh, under the U.S. aegis. Uh, Israel is a leading member of it. Uh, Saudi Arabia is another, one of the most brutal, uh, regressive, uh, harsh states in the world. Uh, United Arab Emirates, uh, Egypt under the uh, harsh, brutal dictatorship. Uh, 
the United States, uh, Israel and the United States, of course, very, uh, especially under this, uh, the alignment goes way back. But the Trump administration has gone way out of its way uh, to lend support to uh, Israeli crimes, Israeli expansion, uh, and the Israeli right wing, of course, is the, which is increasingly dominant, is delighted. Uh, so uh, the fact that, uh, uh, say, the Israeli ambassador would come out and say that is uh, really uh, no more surprising than the fact that uh, John Bolton would praise uh, the election of a, uh, an, a strong advocate of uh, torture, murder, and repression. It all fits the same pattern. This issue of the number of people who died this weekend, the horrific um, massacre, 11 Jews died, um, the model of the coverage, of knowing who each person was, hearing their names, their life stories, their ages, who their families were, knowing when the funerals are taking place through the week. Um, what about this being a model for what's happening in Gaza? I mean, for example, on I think it was Friday, six Palestinians were killed um, with those ongoing protests near the separation wall. Israeli military has gunned down more than 200 Palestinians. Um, that was Friday, six Palestinians died. And on Sunday, three Palestinian teenagers were killed in an Israeli airstrike um, on the Gaza Strip. Your thoughts on um, Dermer trying to make this connection, to get away from the issue of white supremacy, and somehow, some way, um, blame the left? Well, the uh, what uh, remember, all of this in Gaza is being done with overwhelming U.S. support, even U.S. weapons, literally. Uh, the uh, Gaza uh, is uh, on the verge of becoming literally uninhabitable. Uh, the international monitors, uh, UN and others, have warned that within just a few years, uh, it, uh, it, it may be literally unlivable. I mean, right now, there's virtually no uh, uh, potable water. The uh, uh, su uh, sewage uh, pours into the uh, uh, the sea because Israel has bombed and destroyed the power plants and the sewage plants. Uh, when uh, back in 2005, when Israel uh, uh, withdrew its uh, illegal uh, settlers in Gaza and moved them to illegal settlements in the West Bank, it imposed. Uh, a siege on Gaza. Uh, the official terms for that, official, I'm not making this up, are we have to impose a diet on Gaza, not harsh enough so they'll all die, implication being that wouldn't look very good, but harsh enough so that they can barely survive. And there have been, uh, quite apart from the brutal siege, there have been repeated attacks uh, on Gaza by the Israeli army. Uh, Gaza is uh, virtually defenseless. Uh, this is one of the strongest armies in the world, uh, lashing out to devastate Gaza. There's always pretexts. There are pretexts for everything. Uh, Hitler had a pretext for invading Poland. He was uh, protecting Germany from the wild terror of the Poles. And the Israelis, with U.S. backing, have concocted pretexts. No time to go through it here. There's plenty in print about it. Uh, every one of them collapses on inspection. Uh, it's just a punching bag. And the effect on the people of Gaza is to create utter desperation. Uh, the, uh, uh, the, the current uh, march is just an attempt to somehow break the siege and make life possible. Uh, the problem could be overcome easily simply by providing them with the opportunities for survival. That's it. Uh, not, not trying to block every attempt at uh, political unification of the fact factions. It's often been a pretext for another attack. Uh, uh, some of what's going on, I'm 
parts of it we've seen are just uh, grotesque, like uh, when a highly trained Israeli sniper uh, murders a young woman uh, far from the border who's trying to help a, a Palestinian volunteer medic, young woman who's trying to help a wounded man, and a sniper uh, murders her. Uh, train, highly trained snipers, they know what they're doing. Uh, the uh, 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 international monitors have gone to the hospitals, are shocked by the kinds of wounds they're fi finding, purposely designed to maim uh, people so they'll barely—not kill them, but maim them, so they won't be able to have a—even take part in the minimal life that exists there. Uh, actually, uh, Trump had a solution to this to the misery of Gaza and the uh, prospect that two million people, uh, half of them children, will soon be in a situation of literal uh, beyond the possibility of survival. They had a lifeline, what it's called, the UNRWA support, international support, which was barely keeping them alive. So Trump's reaction is to cut it, cut support for it, and he even had a reason. He said, they're not being grateful enough to me for my efforts to give them uh, the ultimate deal that I'm planning, uh, ultimate deal, which means give up all your rights and uh, forget it, uh, to leading uh, American uh, uh, political analysts, specialists on the Middle East with long government service. Uh, Robert Malley, uh, Aaron David Miller really encapsulated the Trump program very simply. Uh, he said the Trump message is to the Palestinians, you've lost, forget it, go away, you're done. And because the people of Gaza are not sufficient on the, on the West Bank are sufficiently appreciative, let's cut the lifeline. In fact, let's even, as he did, cut support for underfunded Palestinian uh, uh, hospitals in the West Bank. Uh, let's cut the funding for uh, the UNRWA school in the uh, uh, Shatila uh, refugee camp in, uh, uh, in Lebanon, still reeking from the uh, uh, hideous uh, Israeli-run massacre there back at the end of their invasion in 82. Uh, you see little kids uh, playing in the mud in dark alleys. They'll never get out. The children will be there and so on. They had a one hope, the UNRWA school. Good, let's kill that. Uh, all of this, th these things are just one after another taking place, uh, indescribable. I mean, the—, the uh, you know, the, the, the war in Yemen, which finally, at last, is getting a little bit of attention, has been a major horror story. Uh, the most careful estimates of the killing that are now just coming out uh, show that there may be seven or eight times as high as what has been the numbers that have been given. They're in the order of uh, 70 or 80,000. Uh, the uh, analysis of these Saudi uh, uh, emirate uh, programs, a long study that came out of the Fletcher School of uh, International Diplomacy at Tufts University recently, uh, showed quite persuasively that the policies of the attackers are aimed at destroying the food supplies, making sure the population starves to death. They're also trying to close the port through which uh, some supplies come. All of this is fully backed by the United States. U.S. and Britain secondarily supply the arms. The U.S. supplies uh, uh, the intelligence for the uh, Saudi Air Force, which is carrying out massive atrocities. All of these things are happening. For years, they've been barely discussed. Now, finally, you're seeing uh, pictures on the front page of starving Yemeni children, even a call for a ceasefire, much belated, a little attention to our crucial responsibility for it, just like our responsibility, which is overwhelming for the plight of the miserable people trying to escape 
from the Troika, uh, Honduras, El Salvador, Guatemala, the three countries that have been completely under our thumb and are suffering bitterly for it, now trying to escape. So we turn them into an invasion mob planning to destroy us. Uh, all of this is surreal. It uh, uh, only is uh, overshadowed by the failure to attend even minimally to the literal existential threats that are not remote. Do you consider this one of the gravest times in your lifetime in U.S. politics now? It's one of the gravest times in human history. Humans have been around for 200,000 years. For the first time in their history, they have to decide, and quickly, whether organized human society is going to survive for very long. And that's not in the remote distance. Uh, the, uh, again, there are two, with all the problems and horrors in the world, which should be attended to, there are two existential threats, both being increased. One is the threat of nuclear war, which is terminal. The other is the threat of severe environmental catastrophe, which doesn't destroy all human life, but is, uh, does undermine the prospects for organized society. And you mentioned earlier a third uh, threat, uh, also dating back to the end of the Second World War. At the end of the Second World War was the opening of the nuclear age. And as I mentioned, it's kind of a miracle that we've survived it. It's also the opening of what geologists are now calling the Anthropocene, uh, the age in which uh, human activity is radically affecting the environment. There's been debate about its origins. The World Geological Society more or less settled on the end of the, the beginning, the end of the Second World War, the late 40s and on, where there was a sharp spike and damage to the environment. The third is what's called the sixth extinction, the extinction of species. The fifth extinction was around 65 million years ago, when it's assumed that a huge asteroid hit the Earth and ended the age of the dinosaurs. It destroyed most of the species on Earth. Uh, we're now in the midst of the sixth extinction, with very rapid destruction of other species and of the kind of environment in which they can survive, like wilderness, for example. Uh, we're pushing to the edge of uh, not only our own survival, but that of uh, much of, the, uh, uh, much of uh, life on Earth. Uh, so is it the most gravest moment in my life? Yes, but also in all of human history. And things like the election next week will have an impact on this. World-renowned professor, linguist, and dissident Noam Chomsky, speaking to us from Tucson, Arizona, where he is now teaching at the University of Arizona. He is the Institute Professor Emeritus of Linguistics at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, where he's taught for more than 50 years, has written over 100 books, was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. We'll air more of the interview with Noam Chomsky next week. This is Democracy Now! When we come back, Alana Glazer joins us, yes, of Comedy Central, Broad City. But she'll be talking about serious things right now. She'll be talking about what happened last night and an event she had planned for a Brooklyn synagogue, where she was going to be talking about politics before the midterms. The event had to be canceled because of anti-Semitic and racist graffiti that was scrawled just before the event around the synagogue. Stay with us.